Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The 10 steps that will help any coach, consultant, or entrepreneur out there to get their game right. Now, obviously, you would have started your business and you followed your heart. It was your passion. You probably was a very good uh, accountant or financial planner, or you were a very good coach, or you had a lot of people that kept telling you, hey, listen, you know, you gave me so much good advice. Why don't you uh, become a coach? And what did you do? You listened. You turned your passion into your mission and you worked hard, listened to all the gurus and Maybe your fear of regret superseded your fear of actually going for it. And we saw you, you know, we were liking, commenting and, um, you know, retweeting your tweets because we saw that you were working hard. But I know something happened. The success you desired didn't arrive on schedule. You probably had a few achievements, a few uh, accolades here and there in your groups. Um, You know, you probably followed all the gurus and you kept your dream alive. And we saw that grit, that uh, sheer tenacity and determination. And we could tell you didn't want to return to that hamster wheel that you had actually jumped from. You know, that was the nine to five um, humdrum and now you're sitting there and you're asking how can i actually grow my business to maybe make it profitable and enjoyable and maybe actually compete with the big players now let me tell you something the biggest problem as a coach consultant or entrepreneur is that marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business okay you gotta hire new stuff you gotta balance the brew books um continuously drive growth within your business and a whole lot of other hats that we have to wear as entrepreneurs and it actually feels like a constant balancing act where you're pulled in multiple different directions all at once and at the end of the day your real goal is to just help your clients and all you just want is to spend as much time you know changing their lives and solving people's problems and you don't want to waste your time or countless hours doing entrepreneurial stuff and navigating through this whole complex world of online marketing and you certainly don't want to spend yet another minute on the phone having to beg people to hire your services and guess what fortunately you don't have to because i don't and you're listening to me right now and we still have a long list of clients that want to work with us and it's not because i'm a genius and it's not because we've mastered the art of persuasion either and It's only because we are following a system that works. Okay. I get you. You're probably exhilarated at the thought of being your own boss, you know, working aside alongside your dog, you know, choosing your own hours and not having to actually punch in the time clock or answer to anyone. If you take a long coffee break or you just want to relax and watch Netflix for a minute, you know, what you may not have taken or taken into consideration or known about entrepreneurship is that's like raising kids you know what i mean they're ups and downs they are different levels different um needs and changes that happen with every stage of growth you know if what worked yesterday with your kid is not going to work today you know i've got a seven-year-old and a two-year-old as we speak right now and Obviously, if my seven-year-old is crying, I'm not going to put a dummy in her mouth because that's not what she wants. She probably needs a cuddle or somebody to talk to so she can explain what's going on with her. My two-year-old, dummy, and maybe chocolate, and that's it. 
So there's going to be a lot of overwhelm, excitement, pain, and joy. Take it all as it comes. And sometimes you're going to think like you're doing it wrong most of the time. You know what? That's natural. And all while you're secretly hoping that you're getting some of it right. Because you're not going to know up until somebody knocks on your house's door and says, Hey, I'm here for that thing that you created. Do you know what I mean? And most of the time, you might want to quit, but all this, all those uh, statements, um, you know, I can also say, you know what? I've been there too, and hang in there, because after you listen to this podcast, I'm gonna give you ten new ways to actually change your game and get it right. There's one thing that I've started doing myself. I've, and if you see some of my pictures on social media, you will notice this. I've started drinking whiskey, not because. I'm hiding my sorrows or anything else, but for the appreciation of what actually goes into whiskey. For those that don't quite know, whiskey is not considered whiskey until it has stayed for a minimum three years within the barrels. And it has to be, if, if you want to call it scotch, that has to all happen within Scotland. And pretty much um, whoever is a distiller would have put, that whiskey, which is maybe um, malt, hopes, and uh, water into a barrel for those three years, and then maybe add five more years or seven more years just so that you have a really good uh, consistency within the beverage. Now, you might be wondering, is this an alcoholic podcast or why are we talking about alcohol today? I'll tell you something. The person who puts in a whiskey and uh, bottles it after 10 years as what entrepreneurship basically is. Somebody just puts in their faith, their hope and knowledge that this thing is going to come out right, you know, and waits for 10 years up until they can bottle at least a few bottles and then puts them on the shelf. So. I don't see any whiskey distillery, um, you know, not not working today because they're waiting for their 10-year-old whiskey to mature. Every single day, they're putting yet another barrel into the shed because they're starting the journey for that barrel to mature into 10 years. So they know that after the 10-year cycle, each and every day, they'll be opening a barrel and... Um, you know, bottling it, and that then creates a consistent flow of uh, products that they're going to be putting out there in the marketplace. Now, I'm going to bring it back to you now and ask, how many things did you put in the last two years or three years that you can actually then open today and present to your audience? How many landing pages? How many social media posts? How many, um, you know, blog posts or podcasts have you put out there that are maturing now with time and actually proving that you actually know what you're talking about, that people can start listening today and say, oh my God, where have you been all my life? You just don't wake up to be an overnight success. So this is why I encourage you to refine and release whatever product you're tinkering with right now. Let the market be the person, be the one that decides whether your product is good or not. Because your business isn't just about what you're selling or what problem it is that you're solving. You know, your focus should be on what gives your life meaning and how what your Offering represents that which you're uh, putting out there. So basically, you're selling your story, not your product or your service. Because let me tell you, if you're a coach, anybody can do NLP. Anyone can do kinesiology if they just put their mind, um, you know, mind to it. But no one can relive your story. No one can retell what it is that you went through. Just putting it back to the whiskey reference, each barrel is unique because it's coming from a different tree that has unique characteristics. And that's what whiskey connoisseurs love. So that's what your customers are paying for. Not the, um, you know, the product or service that you're putting out there, um, but your life story. 
Okay, so if you're stuck in pondering, refining, revising, rewriting, redesigning stage, move forward. Just put it out there. Get it, get it good enough. All right, but not perfect. All right, so just put it out there enough for you to get a review back from the people that are going to be paying you money and rinse and repeat. Done is actually better than perfect, unless maybe you're re-engineering hot valves or knee replacements. But if you're just putting out a consulting, uh, maybe training or information or expertise or some paid speaking gig, man, if you if you heard my first um, you know speaking occasions, you would laugh. Because first of all, I was shivering. I didn't even know if I was saying the right thing. Or if you go back to my first episodes, um, you know, of the podcast, they, I was just putting stuff together, and I didn't even know if it was right. But guess what? Those are the podcasts that have the most downloads than my latest episodes. All right. So whatever you're doing. Just put it out there and let the market be the one that decides whether they like it or not. As long as you've identified your market and you've clarified your message, somebody's going to put up their hand and say, hey, I'm the one. It's just like how we created the Online Prosperity Blueprint, okay? With the Online Prosperity br- Blueprint, it's a, it's a very simple statement that I've developed by throwing away all the marketer rule books or best kept practices and I actually just went in and adopted a new approach that suited who I was and how I was actually um, coming out in the world right there. And it has helped me scale my own business from zero to about 450 clients in just six years. So that's my whiskey right there. You know, and I even have a staff of 16 people that are putting all that whiskey in the barrels. So all I can tell you is I've built my brand from the heart. And not from my head, because if I went in from my head, I would have listened to all the other gurus out there and what they were saying, which worked in their business and it didn't work for me. So because no one knows who you are, you know, where no one knows what you're going through. No one knows the exact depth of how far you're willing to take this. So no one can tell you what the best practices are. No one knows what to find you or or what to do. Oh, you know, how you conduct your own business there. So if they can't find you, if they don't know about you, then definitely they cannot buy from you. All right. Look at it both ways. So a legitimate problem, but it's easily solvable. The step that matters most is uh, to your bottom line. However, is incorporating bits of your journey and your soul, not just your expertise, and focus on being resonant. You must resonate to the audience that you're hoping to be getting money from. Because a great brand builds relationships and relationships um, with the buyers that um, you want people to buy from you. You see, I'm the founder of a, a digital agency where we actually help businesses explode in growth using digital marketing. And I'm particularly passionate about helping coaches and consultants and even some small business owners grow their business because I pretty much know what it is like to come from nothing. (laughs) You see, I was born in Zimbabwe in Africa, and I don't know if you know where that is, but growing up for us, life was pretty tough. You know, we didn't have a lot of money or hope, but I knew something was going to happen to my life. And situations people started being thrown in my path um and i i was paying attention so your life story and your experience have greater uh, value than you know the expertise that you think you hold i mean your expertise is important but you really want to be incorporating your life story because that's how you resonate with people because when you're a coach or a consultant, people already put you on a pedestal. People already put you in the guru spectrum. So you want people to actually start thinking, wait a minute, she too, he too went through what I'm going through right now. And the best way to do this is figure out what are you actually struggling with right now? What are you embarrassed with right now? And what are you doing about it? That's what people want to know. That's what people want to, um, you know, latch on to. So you need to 
figure out what it is that you're providing to the marketplace and how you have dealt with it in the past in your own unique way. And after you've done that, just determine if you actually have fear of failure or fear of success or both. Because feel the fear and do it anyway. Because you're probably clear on fear of failure. You know, the hesitancy that comes with the fact that you're what you're doing might not work and, you know, could put you in a painful predicament either on your own reputation or maybe in your bank account. But what you may be less familiar with is actual fear of success. That might be equally paralyzing because you have a deep-seated worry about how your life would change if your business actually takes off. So you need to take stock and figure out, are you actually afraid of succeeding? Because you could have succeeded a long time ago, but you're probably doing a few things that might be jeopardizing your actual success. Yeah, you might be disappointed that you haven't reached your goals, but you're comfortable with the familiarity of how your life is right now. So the fear of success is realized the same way as the fear of of failure. Ask yourself these three questions. You know, what's the worst that can happen if you become successful? Because some people are actually afraid. That's the reason why those lottery winners actually try and get rid of all that money because they always assume the worst that could happen because of the newfound success. Ask yourself, are you actually ready to um, handle success when it comes? You see, I always joke around wanting to buy a Rolls Royce and I walk, you know, um, sometimes with my little girl to school and I'm thinking, wait a minute, will a Rolls Royce be able to turn on these curves? But obviously a bus can. So, okay, that's fine. Maybe I'll be able to, able to handle that. Now, there's a funny thing that then happens when I come back and I open my garage door and then I see all the stuff that is in the garage. And I'm thinking to myself, even if I was buying, I was to buy a Tesla, would I be able to park it in the garage with all this stuff? So it means maybe I'm not quite ready for it yet because I haven't cleared the room for me to put a Tesla in there because I'm going to need to be charging it overnight. So ask yourself, can I handle this success? Have you cleared the landing spot for this success to come through? Because maybe you haven't done it. Okay. Like I haven't cleared up my garage in, to make space for the tesla when it comes you know so there you go or oh, the rolls royce if 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 i am going to be coming through with a rolls royce i'm gonna definitely need a way bigger garage so have i created space and room in my life to accommodate a big car when it comes in and ask yourself again what's the best that can happen what is the best thing that can happen when you actually then bring in that car, that relationship, that business, that those clients? Are you ready for them? What's the best that can happen when you've got clients that pay, stay, and refer? And then choose comfortable and familiar, um, you know, or with whatever you want, or choose to create space for success because you might not have created it and you might be actually self sabotaging um you know your your own success or whatever it is that you could do that because let me tell you something fears are actually educated into us don't do that you're gonna burn oh be careful be humble and can if we wish you can also learn how to walk out of these fears, right? Like what I do every single day, I'm walking around looking and thinking if I'm driving with the car that I want, would I still be able to do that in this neighborhood without having people gawking at me um, or calling the cops thinking, what's this um, African guy doing with an expensive car like this? He must have stolen it. So figure out, are you actually ready for the success that you're looking for? Because you might not be, and you might be asking for these things, but the things are just waiting, ready to enter, but you haven't created space for them. And once you've figured that out, just hustle your butt off. 
you know because when you link your service or your product with your story you can easily talk to everyone all the time about um what you're doing without even sounding salesy you know i always talk about how i met a teacher when i was 13 and she literally changed the course of my life and i've been on tv with that story i've i i've, I've plastered it all over my website and what that teacher told me is there is a whole nother world outside of my small town that i grew up in you know there was a whole world of infinite possibilities for people who dreamt big and had the courage to follow the dream and the rest of my time in school i worked my butt off to learn as much as i could and a few years later i ended up in australia and i'm doing what i'm doing right now so i incorporated the hustle and now my story is now to become and represent um the idea that you can come from wherever you come from in the world and be do and have a happier existence it does not matter who you are or where you're coming from as long as you're paying attention to the universe it's always conspiring to bring you that which you want so now that has become my story and i can tell it any other time and while i'm telling my story hey i do happen to sell digital marketing services so if you link your service to your story and why it is important for people to actually pay attention to you you will sell a whole lot more without being um salesy at all and if you want to be successful um you have to be maybe somebody who people are always talking about you know you actually need to be out there with people and you don't want to uh be held back because you you people don't know who you are because people do business with those that they know like and trust so if you're working all the time and um you're not getting a bit of traction maybe you're not telling your story enough just give your in a badass entrepreneur a hustler nickname and embrace that part that knows that you're in business to make money and just put it out there and let people know who they're going to be dealing with so while you're at it as well just focus focus all right just keep working hard cuz focus is an acronym for follow one course until successful all right if you try and dabble into a lot of things you end up not actually producing a whole lot okay figure out where you want to go and then just reverse engineer um from where you are and half of the time you want to just focus on what you don't do well um and either hire for it or try and learn um from people that are already um you know experts in that space because if you're going to be spending all your time becoming more of an expert in uh, at what it is that you do or maybe chasing more credentials um and living in the comfort zone because that's what you know but you also may be neglecting your marketing or strategic planning or actually going out there and and meeting people and growing your business maybe success is actually going to elude you so instead of listening to maybe your uh, journal articles in your field or ted talks or things like that look out for people like um you know tony robbins gary vaynerchuk prosper tarovinga and watch and learn how they're actually putting themselves out there um you know in order to reach their audience and it might all be overwhelming so just focus on just small goals on your way to the big dream all right and this episode is created one i mean this podcast is created one episode at a time so don't look at it and think oh my god this guy already has 200 episodes how am i ever going to compete with that you know I love dreaming big and if you were listening from the start you would have heard that I I want to buy a Rolls Royce or Tesla and oh maybe I'm focusing on being an Amazon best selling author obviously that goal is definitely on my vision board but so is um the whole writing of the book and the getting published etc etc so I mean obviously this might be a simple example and it might be overlooking you know the consistently uh focus steps that i have to do in order to get there sometimes you got to read a whole bunch just to be able to maintain and sustain a podcast for 1 minute so maybe you now need to maybe just start by just reading things that will 
increase your knowledge around what it is that you want to do, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of looking at a big goal of, oh, I want to buy a Tesla or I want to buy a Rolls Royce or I want to be a best-selling author, maybe just look at how many hours a day are you actually reading in order for you to, to increase your job, to increase your audience, to increase your message, to clarify it and actually have an understanding of what you're actually doing and what you're putting out there in the, in the world. Because I think it was Jim Rohn that says discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. There's going to be a long radio silence between the time you say, okay, I'm getting started to the time you actually say, wow, this is the success. So, you know, but for you to actually achieve those goals, you need to be very, very disciplined. So in the process, you want to make things like I can your new motto and you banish I can't from your vocabulary. You know, it's it's really true anyway. You can say, oh, I don't know how to do this or I don't know how I'm going to work this out. You could always say, I am going to figure it out or I'm going to find people that are going to, um, you know, help me arrive. Oh, the universe is always putting people in your uh, path that will help you be, do and have a happier existence. And if you can't, you know, achieve what you're doing by yourself, ask for help. You know, it's, it's usually easy to sleep into excuses like, oh, I think everyone is busy or um, oh, I have to pay people to do this for me or why uh, would so-and-so want to help me? It's a risk, um, obviously, to try and do everything by yourself because you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full, you know? However, you know, wishing, wanting, and hoping that you what you need will magically appear um, will keep success at bay. Do you know what I mean? The answer will always be uh, yes or no. Um, in other ways, it's okay. Just ask whoever is ahead of you or, you know, people like myself, hey, how did you do this? Just ask. And if somebody says no, don't take it personally. Maybe they're going through a hard time. Um, and maybe they're going through stuff, you know, and I think it was Jeff, Jack Can Canfield, uh, the author of, um, you know, uh, Chicken Soup. He says that uh, every no brings you closer to a yes. So be sure uh, you can tell whether somebody is just going through a hard time or they definitely cannot help you. But don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. And that also gets you to know um, who your people are going to be because it's going to be very expensive to listen to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. So, you know, you know what, what you want to do is you want to know the people that are going to be there to help you. And you also want to know the people that you need to copy from. Because why invent mediocrity when you can copy genius? So you need to know who your role models are. And don't try to reinvent the wheel because the wheel already exists. All right? Find out who's doing what you want to do, be and have. Study them. Contact them. And um, just replicate their success. You know? Use them as an anchor point or, you know, as, um, as a reference point. Because for work, your life, relationships, we're here to live, to learn, and to contribute. So we learn from other people's mistakes. And if you know who not to learn from, and you definitely know who your role models are. And like anything, just keep it in perspective. Because your big goal may not be what your, um, you know, your, your mentors or your role models are. But you just need them to show you the way of what to and what not to do. And in the process, man, just keep working at it. Just keep looking out for people that are doing stuff that you're doing. You see, when I came here, I didn't know how to actually get started. You know, I knew no one, you know, all I had was a backpack full of hopes and dreams. But I threw myself in this new line of work and I started reading everything on digital marketing that I could put my hands on. So that's why I began working with some small businesses and I actually helped them achieve massive growth using my newfound knowledge. And then I asked them, hey, can I use this as a case study? You know, fast forward to today, I've now partnered with more than 450 businesses. 
And I now have an entire team of battle-hardened marketing experts um, that are working for me. I've been nominated for multiple awards, um, you know, including maybe an Entrepreneur Award of the Year, Networker um, of the Year in 2020, in the hardest year that we experienced in, 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 in terms of business. But, I mean, obviously we could go on and on. All of this pales to the comparison um, to uh, the actual success that I've achieved for my clients. So at the end of the day, there you go. It's these 10 steps that I just went through will actually help you get your game right. You know, because at the end of the day, like we started off, you know, you, you're following your heart and you're turning your passion into your mission. The last thing that you want to do is maybe um, not get this to work and you would have wasted not only your time, your family's time and everybody else that was hoping that, you know, you, you're going to make something, um, yeah. And represent them because they maybe didn't follow their dreams and everything else. So, so now it's your turn, discover how you can actually turn your business around and actually start, you know, becoming profitable and enjoyable. And this can actually happen, um, within two years. Well, one thing that I can tell you is I can save you a lot of time, you know, and we can help you implement the online prosperity method and we can tailor this to your particular business and help you explode. So if you're a coach or consultant, um, you know, that is uh, maybe going through a slump right now, um, just reach out and we can see how um, you too can actually achieve some of the mind blowing success that we've helped our clients achieve and this doesn't mean that this is going to work with everybody else but you know what, what what have you got to lose if you haven't been actually um you know turning the dial in terms of generating consistent leads generating consistent revenue and actually um you know sleep at night knowing that you don't have to worry where your next customer is going to come from but in the meantime um i'm hoping that you know these 10 ways are actually going to change your game so you can actually get it right um bye for now thank you for joining us today if you have any questions let's continue the conversation in the live long digital community become a live long digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au